Ali. I think uh, Ali uh, I think you can start. Okay. So thank you guys and welcome to this meetup. I think it's meetup number 12 for the AWS user group Beirut. Thank you, Anas. And um, thank you, Farouk, also for uh, joining us in this uh, meetup. Uh, so my, my talk will be about technically the AWS training and certification, why it's important. I'll share some statistics and then I will see how we can close this gap and what's the certification path. Um, and this will not be just a talk because uh, you can be interactive because I have my own experience and I will, I, I will uh, also show you like uh, something like I've done and my own experience with AWS certification. So before we jump in um, into this um, talk, let me introduce myself. So um, I'm nine times certified AWS. I started my career with Cisco networking. I'm computer engineer and I have masters in business administration. Uh, I'm CCIE since 2008 and um, authorized instructor champion for AWS. I've uh, started my own company four years ago, and we are now an advanced consulting partner for AWS, zero and one. So this is me, and those are my kids. I'm father for two, and uh, I miss them since I'm locked in Dubai. They are still in Beirut. So these are my contact details, my email, my phone number, WhatsApp, and LinkedIn. Please feel free anytime if you have anything related to AWS, I'm more than happy to support you, especially from a certification and training perspective. So before jumping into our presentation today, mm -hmm. I just want to share something that's really like on a personal experience for certification and study. It's, it's a story like happened to me. So I'm, I'm a bit old, I don't know, maybe mid-age, <laughs> are coming into the market, firewalls, so I was like very into networking. I loved it. So I jumped in and I searched, I did some, there was not enough resources back then, but Cisco was the top and I decided to shape my skills because I want to land a job with uh, something related to networking, something that was booming back then. So. I studied my CCNA, I did my certificate, and then I jumped in, I said, no, I will do more. I studied for CCMP, first exam, second exam, third exam, four, fourth exam, so like four exams. And then somebody told me, why don't you go for a CCIE? I was like, this is, ish, this is a huge thing. This is very big, expensive. I have to travel. It needs a lot of experience. It needs a lot of hands-on and stuff. It's an eight hours hands-on exam. And, but I was persistent. I said, okay, I can do it, let's do it. And then what happened during the roadmap, I had the chance to join Cisco in San Jose, California. So, and I did my certificate, my exam there. So the, the moral of this story was, it's just like, it was the cool time, the best time for networking. And I had my certification and I landed a job with the vendor where I was trying to be certified with. It's because it was the right time for that. So now we are in a different era. We're in the cloud era, not the infrastructure. So if, I mean, uh, uh, so that's why that's the, why we are now face, seeing a huge demand on cloud skills. But the thing is, we still have some cloud skills gap. According to certain studies like and researchers, 90% of IT decision makers, they report cloud skills shortages. Okay, so when it comes to cloud adoption, the biggest challenge isn't technology. It's the people and processes that must change and adapt. So people have to change their mindset and move from their comfort zone. I took that leap. I left my networking and uh, uh, I mean, just to, con to, to add on to the story, I landed 21 interview in one month when I did my CCIE. 
So because it was in high demand. So imagine now, if you get certified and to be expert in the cloud, how many interviews you will land and how you might find your uh, uh, passion in, in, in some specialty that we will discuss and you will land your future, um, how can I say, like dream job, okay? So you should be in demand according to the wave. Don't stick to a comfort zone. So people have to adapt to the change. So as cloud migration is really accelerating, I mean, like I've been in this market for four years uh, doing migrations. I mean, it was like rarely we can, we were trying to educate people. We were trying to get more business towards the cloud, but now we just see people coming in with this COVID thing. Everyone was thinking why I wasn't on the cloud, every organization. So now we're seeing a huge migration, a huge demand for the cloud. People want to work from home. Uh, people were not prepared, so so everyone wants to migrate. But this mig acceleration in this migration has a huge demand on cloud talent. So th this uh, this was the why. I'm trying to give you the why you have to be certified, and then we'll take we'll take you through how. So in order to bridge this gap that we mentioned, there is a gap. So we need to help you close this gap. AWS has training and certification offers that, and a lot of resources that can help you to develop your skills and innovate in the cloud and transform your organization. Or even if you are working on your own as a freelancer or building your own projects, that's how you can elevate your um, business to the next level. Um, and that's the focus of this slide. So according to some studies like faster cloud adoption, I mean, with, uh, with training and certification will lead you to a measurable results. So, I mean, 80% faster cloud adoption with skilled and certified uh, staff. And even if you have, uh, you can have the buy-in from your stakeholders. If you have the skills, if you show the certification, and you are willing to, to do your projects, you do your migration to build for the cloud, it's 4.4 times more likely to overcome any operational and performance concerns. Because we've seen it like executives want to move to the cloud, but the main problem is always like the lack of talent and skills. So how do you, we bridge the gap by training our uh, staff? And then even the productivity of employees with training, like 4.7 times more likely IT productivity has increased. Why? Because you focus on what matters. You're focusing on adding value. You're not focusing on like the heavy lifting and managing IT and setup and, and stuff like that. So you're more focused towards building what matters, going to market fast, faster, uh, failing fast, recovering faster. So you can try, you can test, you can just I mean, and with the, with the required skills, you can do it even better. So, and thus the result will always be achieving a higher ROI wherever your business is. If you are a freelance, then you can charge more because you are certified, because you can get different project types, because now you are ready to build. I mean, maybe you know from some experience, but you don't have any endorsement to justify why you want X plus more than the average market price. So moving again, showing some additional statistics regarding the cloud skill gap. So 80% of information technology decision makers always report a gap between their team's skill level and the ability to achieve organizational goals. 68% of IT decision maker will anticipate this skill gap will still emerge in the coming two years. So we're not talking about history, guys. We're talking about the present. So this is 2019 statistics, just recent. Imagine with the COVID and organization now enforcing remote work, migrating their workloads to the cloud. So those skills are highly in demand. Again, this is an estimate like 30% of the jobs will, will be left open. You know why? 
nobody wants to to hire and keep the position open for a long time but there is a gap and there is no enough talent i mean there might be a talent but if i receive as a as a company owner i receive a cv i'm looking for certified person regardless if you will say my skills my skills my skills i will be looking for something to enforce your skills like to give you the credibility right i need endorsement i need a legal entity that can certify that you know this right so i don't want to risk it so that's the thing with certification again cloud computing is the number one hard skill companies need that's also another published study from the skills company need most in 2019 from linkedin so again those are new studies this this is the, this is the present guys i'm not talking about some old statistics so how do we bridge this gap how do we uh, uh, bring this talent to the table by training and 78 percent of organization who trained uh, uh, their staff they see that they have they are developing the, the, the needed skill and 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 they provide i mean they they keep and they're set they they're, they are satisfied in their roles more like 30 percent reported that they have more satisfaction in their role because you you might have problems with the cloud i mean i faced that with so many customers that they say that ah, this cloud thing or this service doesn't work or blah 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 it takes too much but it's the lack of knowledge that's why education is key when you are adopting to a new technology so how do you build how do you build your cloud skills okay enough statistics enough why enough selling so let's see how can you do it right so AWS offers digital training. This is one resource. So there are so many resources available. This digital training is free and on-demand courses. Okay, that will help you learn. There are like 500 plus small courses between up to 500 hour of digital training that you can go to aws.training and register for free. Another resource could be some classroom trainings which are currently delivered virtually so there are so many offerings like 20 plus offerings now from aws and the result i mean we don't want just to be trained we need to get certified because training without certification we don't get the endorsement i mean a lot of people would share that i have finished this udemy course blah 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 okay i don't care <laughs> you, if you're not certified because I can put it on autoplay and it will run alone and it will finish and you can download that PDF, right? It's fine. But what makes you different? What differentiates you when I look towards your CV or LinkedIn profile? If you are verified, again, verification comes with certification. That's an endorsement. I might not be the best solution architect, but I'm certified. So I'm at least my skills were verified. So there are some education pro programs offered by AWS, like academies, like restarts, like educate for universities. So this is beyond this the discussion today, but it's good to know that AWS offers some programs to embed within the universities they have academy unfortunately in our region the academy is only available in bahrain where you can join it for a like a normal school it's an academy where you graduate from the academy and they can uh, it's kind of like a big endorsement like but we don't have this type of academy only it's available only in bahrain for now um so currently classes are all given virtually. So this is how aws.training look like. So you can, there are on-demand courses to help you over like 500 courses, uh, including uh, uh, solutions like machine learning, IoT, storage, and more of that. So they are like open and digital and for free. So there are small bytes, there are courses like uh, that if you need to focus on, on building some, some skill, so you can jump in and search within the library. And there are so many, I mean, I, a lot of people don't know about this. 
but this is very valuable library of training material. And this is like a sample of those three digital trainings. You have different levels, fundamental, intermediate, and advanced. So you can see like you can have the 10 minutes training, which is fundamental course introduction to AWS Lambda. So if you're just curious about some service, you can jump in and watch what's Lambda, what does it do? Most uh, all services have this 10 minutes training. And then you can jump into cloud practitioner course, the essentials. It's a 4.5 hours of video. And then uh, there are like also advanced courses, developing machine learning, and uh, deep dive into Amazon. So this is just a sample, guys. Okay, so you can see there is a explore the full course catalog on the AWS dot training. I highly encourage you to jump in. If you are doing some hands on, you need to focus on certain uh, service. You need to understand how does this uh, look like? What's the difference between this service and that? I mean, you can find all the answers there. So this is the, your first step your free library. Then there are the classroom trainings. Unfortunately, we are not doing currently classroom trainings. All the trainings are virtual. So you, with the training, with the official training with AWS, you will get an instructor. There is a digital kit that includes material. And uh, this material will be like the slides the instructor is using, and you will get lab guides, and you will have hands-on lab experience. So it's uh, normally those trainings are like three days, eight hours per day, including almost some six labs, hands-on labs, and um, digital kit, and you get voucher for the exam so if you register for an official training with aws you'll get the instructor for three days the labs the digital kit and material and voucher for the exam so currently all classes are done virtually at the, as we speak so let me just clarify something that the classes and the official courses that AWS offers do not have the same naming as the exams because I've seen a lot of confusion because it's the approach in the giving the practical training is more of how to understand and how to have uh, the real experience when working on AWS. Getting being certified will is 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 a step like is different than just having the experience and understanding so it needs extra effort so the training like architecting on aws so that's one of the most famous training it's not like getting set getting aws certified associate exam it's different but definitely it will help you towards the certification okay so those are like some of the famous trainings like the technical AWS technical essentials, which is recommended for anyone, even from a business background to join. It's a foundation. It will discuss the, discuss the value proposition of AWS and the global infrastructure. And then we define certain core services that are needed. So it's more of understanding EC2, S3, those terminology, terminologies like uh, how to build a small uh, architecture and how you evolve it using AWS services. And then it covers some pricing strategies, how do, what are different uh, purchasing options for compute or storage and um, what are the different support packages available. And for sure, we, for, we, we end up with the uh, discussing like what's the well architected framework. So architecting on AWS is a three days training. It's an intermediate. It's to be honest, it's load of information. In three days, you will get load of information and you will have six lab covered within this training. Okay, so those are official training from AWS. Developing on AWS also shows you how you can build application using SDK to integrate with the AWS, 
system operations on AWS is more focused about how you operate your workloads, how you manage your existing infrastructure, how you do automations, alerting and notifications, and how you remediate any um, uh, any uh, incidents. Again, it for uh, all of this uh, will lead you will will support you big time in your training. The way they the, the trainings are designed, structure that. It's a journey where you can build something from first hour towards the last minute of the course. So you are building and developing something. So it's a story, it's a journey. It's not like, let's discuss this topic and we just talk about it, we finish, we move to another topic. No, they are connected in building a story. So the approach is really very helpful in building the mindset towards the cloud. So, those are like several, uh, that's, the, I mean, if you want to go to the advanced level, you can go to the DevOps engineering on AWS, advanced architecting. I will show you in the coming slides, like the real path towards achieving the certification, okay? But it's good to know what's available and your options. So we've finished the digital training, which is a free library. And those are like the official trainings. Before those were like, kind of expensive or not affordable because i mean a trainer had to travel and uh, lebanon wasn't especially we're talking about user community in beirut so for lebanon it was like an overhead to send uh, there are no public classes so you have to join some public class somewhere and you have to travel maybe but now given that all trainings are virtual and prices are always like 60 to 70 percent discounted just for you to know these days because of the they want people to to learn and since it's virtual and remote things are easier so look at this it's very interesting um so those are the different types of training if you are in organization you have a team or your startup like you can have your own private training by aws given that you have at least 10 people to attend so this is like something you can request if you have 10 people that can attend any training you can be offered this private training and since it's virtual you can we can get very special offer now for for private trainings okay they are virtual remote for three days so what about aws certifications why do we need to get certified again we need to identify skilled professionals to lead any aws cloud initiative so if if it's a i mean how do i validate the talent you might be a good talent but all our uh, infrastructure or my applications are developed on aws or we are willing to migrate and develop why i should hire you why i should look into your cv so it's a validation that you know so you will be recognized in this industry you will be connected to people who are certified you will be exposed to opportunities and from a job effectiveness being certified give you also like a better performance and you will do smoother deployments things that you know what you know right that's what we say so you will keep doing the same thing the way you know how to do it unless you learn how to do it otherwise then your performance will stay the same right so so that's the key so when you learn new skills when you build these capabilities so you will learn different ways to approach different solutions so i have a one of my favorite sayings that i share during trainings is the, um, when the only tool you have is a hammer all problems are nails. So when you learn, so we, we like, I give you an example. What does that mean? So we've been doing, let's say, relational database in most of our deployments, if not all, and building on top of SQL, MS, SQL, they teach us in university, and then we keep doing it. And then we're comfortable with that zone and we just use that tool for everything so we try to fit whatever problem in this solution but when you move to the cloud you have all the tools set so 
choose the right tool for the right problem. That's it. And then you will be doing better job, better performance, innovative ideas, moving faster, and making competition irrelevant. That's a key. Don't jump into competition. Always look in making competition irrelevant. Your skills, you're competing with other talent, right? So if I'm certified and skilled, you know you are a React Native or React JS expert. So there are like hundred ones beside near you in the same street, right? But if you are AWS certified, I'll hire you, right? Why? Among the hundred, because I'm looking for AWS certified. That's it. So that's a differentiator. You made the competition irrelevant. So those are the available AWS certifications. When I started my journey with AWS, there were only like what we call the five, five certification, the core. So there were only the associate level three and the professional two. They were five certifications when I initially started the journey. Currently, they are 12, okay? So there is a foundation layer level, which technically will, will require some, uh, I mean, no prerequisites for that, but it's a foundation that gives you the introduction and even salespeople or management level can jump into cloud practitioner. I highly recommend anyone who's not yet certified to jump in. If you have some experience, you can uh, nail it in a week and you can do it remotely at home and it's online proctoring. So from the associate level, there are three types based on the job role. So it's architect, operations or developer. So there is the solution architect associate, the sysops administrator associate, which is focusing on the operation in the cloud. You should be, it will teach you on how to manage CloudWatch alerts and take actions beside like system manager and stuff like that. And from a, the third one, if you are a developer developing natively on AWS, so that's the focus. It will teach you how to use the APIs and the SDKs to integrate in whatever language. So the official training for AWS will offer you three types of lab. So .NET, the Java, and Python. So you can do the labs in whatever language you feel comfortable with. And then there is the professional level. At the professional level, let me just be honest with you. So there are no new topics, let's say, or you will not be introduced to a huge load of uh, data. But the difference is the exam itself will be different. In, 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 which, in which sense? So there will be bigger scenarios and there will, will be like confusing answers that look like, like other, the same. So you have to really understand and to give an analytical thinking before answering. So you have to, to be the consultant in the case. So they, they will show you some cases and then you will have to think how I solve it in the best way, okay? So you, have, you might be focusing on the cost element or am I focusing on the performance element? Because both answers are right. So which one is better? See, it's a professional level that I don't advise anyone to jump immediately to a professional without having enough experience. It's tough, it's long exam, and it really needs focus. So it will test your stamina during the exam. It's a three hours that you can barely finish on time because of the long questions and scenarios. It will consume your brain. So be ready. Those exams are not a joke or a journey. So that's why if you are certified, you're accredited, you're highly accredited. And the same goes for the DevOps uh, professional. So jumping into the specialty, now, there, I mean, you, the specialty comes from that you are specialized in something previously, okay? So for me, I was a network engineer and I'm a CCIE. So I thought that jumping to advanced networking will be that easy. It 
it happens to be that the specialty uh, exams are really hard and the advanced networking was really tough so tough so so from a security perspective if you have background of security then you jump into that so specialties have no prerequisites so that's what i'm saying so you can jump into a specialty exam amazon aws do not require any prerequisite to jump in into any specialty now what's in high demand is definitely machine learning and analytics database is the recent one it was launched in april so because there are so many tools, as I said, different database types, NoSQL, SQL, Redshift for data warehousing, and different uh, type of uh, setups, installations, different uh, scenarios. So migrations from on-prem to the cloud. So that's the database specialty now. And there is the Alexa skill builder. If you are like, uh, you know what's Alexa and you like to build some Alexa interesting uh, applications so you can be certified and you can apply for different positions or you can even offer your own and why i have to buy from you or maybe because i'm certified alexa specialty so i know what i'm doing so you see this is an advantage i know a lot of lot of developers they do build some alexa programs and some nice stuff just for fun but if you are certified and you are a specialist then you can offer this as a professional service. You can sell what you are doing because they will trust you with what you've done, right? So <clears throat> I don't advise any one of you to jump into specialty exams before having at least the solution architect, okay? It states that there is no requirement or prerequisite, but I doubt it will be any easy or it, because it assumes so many knowledge like you know what's s3 what's vpc and you know a lot of things before jumping in so they will not teach you what are those they will assume you know it okay so again to recap about specialty it's very important you should be good in something and you will specialize in using this something on aws so machine learning specialty it will not teach you the ABC of machine learning. So you should know machine learning, but this is a specialty on how to utilize machine learning with the AWS framework and existing services, okay? So you should know machine learning. Same for networking and security and databases, and even for analytics. It was called the big data specialty, and um, recently they updated the exam in april and it's called data analytics this was my latest certification i passed that during the pandemic i wa i wanted to do something remote and test this experience with online proctoring so yes it's data analytics it focuses on how you build data lakes how you ingest big data how you stream them how you store and how you do how you analyze and how you visualize so it's the full cycle of managing your data lakes from the consumer towards the visualization <laughs> guys if you have any questions just stop me and ask okay anas i cannot see if there is any text just help me if, because i have full screen uh, have any questions there's an raise your hand option where like we give ali a pause to answer any questions please go ahead okay so what's the journey towards certification? How does it start and how will it end? So you have to review the exam guide. AWS have their uh, exam guides online. You can see the, the link downstairs. Uh, and then you take some AWS training, get hands-on practical experience, very critical. I mean, you cannot pass without, I mean, having some hands-on experience. I've Previously, like long time, I passed a lot of exams with zero or no experience before AWS. I'm talking about other vendors, but with AWS, that's impossible. And review some the sample questions. They offer you sample questions, and they offer even some uh, 
uh, online test that the practice test that you can purchase for like few dollars um, so it gives you the, the feeling of the exam okay uh, with AWS you cannot get your hands online like I mean this is from I mean I'm someone who been there okay so we I've seen a lot of students a lot of people asking me for is there any dump how can I prepare for the exam so I can pass literally with AWS it's very hard if you find online that they sell you something maybe you will get one or two questions out of 65 okay so don't count on that I know AWS SAs solution architects who will go to do some exams and they will fail okay so because of the overconfidence be prepared and you will pass so get the enough experience study for that and you will make i mean just the the exam experience itself is about being in a good mindset and well prepared so that's it so it's not only about the knowledge so it's a combination of also physical and psychological beside your knowledge you have to stay there and focus so review the white papers and faqs very important guys i think 80 percent of the exam questions are from white papers and the faqs and some reinvent videos just to add on top so reinvent videos white papers and faqs that's where they get that's the material that compose the exam and then take an a certification exam readiness course aws also offer these courses they are like half day four hours they just get you a, a, a workshop as readiness for the exam they show how you should approach and uh, how you should uh, interpret the questions what type of answers to consider and how you can manage your time and what's the expectation and then you can take that practice exam i said schedule your exam and finally get certified so this is the perfect let's say uh, roadmap towards getting certified if you want to feel confident well prepared I mean, on top of that yes S sorry Ali, i had a question mm -hmm. regarding uh, reviewing aws white papers and frequently uh, asked question i mean uh, AWS normally they release uh, uh, multiple uh, white papers on weekly basis. So uh, yes. we I mean, there is all of that. No, there are list of white papers. Con that's why we have twelve exams, right? So you're not going to the twelve together. So if you're going for the architect, there are like top five white papers, well known, the well architected framework. Then the uh, and then like you can check the migration uh, the migration path and then you will get some best practices on let's say s3 so 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 that's the core where you focus so there are like silver and then there is like the disaster recovery planning white paper so those are very key white papers the more you know you more the more you read the better you feel in your exam that's it and it will never be wasted because you can you still have the knowledge right regardless if they ask you or not yeah okay 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 thank you okay so there is a list of recommended white papers per exam they will list like i think 20 white papers normally okay but if you jump into to specialty exams yes the white papers are a must and you can never pass without the white papers and faqs you should read as much as you can of this. They, they look into this. I mean, this is the source of the questions of the exam. They will not tell you directly, but they will tell you read the white papers. And yes, any question? So Danny is saying practice exams usually have, uh, oh, let's start with Ali. Ali is asking you to advise proceeding with associate architect immediately. As a first third, or is it better to make it into a practitioner first? Okay, so if you already had, I mean, let, let me let me put it this way. So 
if I mean, you can go like uh, for a cloud practitioner preparation, if you have some experience, I mean, if you will be, I mean, you will have this badge in one week or two weeks, right? But if you are preparing for the associate, you will wait and you will prepare more for that. Okay, so what's the benefit? I mean, what you will study for the practitioner is complement, you will need on top of it to achieve the architect. So you are not studying medicine and going to engineering, right? So it's considered that as a prerequisite, it will give you confidence. You will feel more prepared. You will say that I'm huh, certified now. Okay, I'm practitioner, but I finished my foundation. That's my recommendation. You can go, but you will save hundred dollars. That's the thing, right? If it's a cost aspect, but think of it this way. I will mention this in the coming slides. So if I do the practitioner, okay, the practitioner exam costs hundred dollars now, and the solution architect costs hundred fifty. Cool. So the total is two hundred and fifty dollars. Now we are talking financials because I know most of you will think of the price and cost of these examinations. So $250. If you, do the if you do only the associate, you will pay $150. But if you will do the practitioner and pay $100, you will get a 50% voucher for your next exam. And then your solution architect will cost you $75. So you will be doing two exams for $175. And you will have two badges. And it's if you're preparing, go for a practitioner. It's it's, it's let's say 10% of the way towards the architect and jump into the architect. Makes sense. But once you get certified, you will get these nice badges. You know, you can arrange them the way you want, post them. So this is really nice as to, to showcase that you are certified. So you get this exclusive AWS sponsored badges. So you can even be in some events and show them and you can get access to certain things. Like I still remember long time when I joined like Cisco Networkers, I was in CCIE. And then now I'm joining like these uh, events physically with like uh, nine times certified. So you see, it, it just gives you like more self-confidence on, on a personal level, okay? So because you will be identified with your badge and they will print it and everyone will know, you know what I mean? So this is kind of, it's not show off. It's just more of giving you confidence. People will come to you, will consult you, will ask you. So you will feel more confident. And if you don't know, some questions you will have the curiosity to get the answers so you will learn more so the more you you see so so i hope i i mean i mean you get me you get what i'm on don't use it to show off but rather use it to be more self-confident and learn more be confident about you know so the more i know the less i know that's what i think einstein said like the only thing i know the more i learn the less i know so just be, learn and be curious. So for exam vouchers, there is a, a way if you're working for company or organization, or if you have a team, you're running your own. So you can go to the, uh, this link where there is a voucher platform where you can buy vouchers and you can distribute them to the team or you ask your management to buy these vouchers uh, online so you can purchase this x it's called x voucher this platform so you can buy vouchers distribute them and redeem them from any view or psi exam and then you can track and manage you see like who used the voucher so so this is kind of management of a prepaid vouchers for exam if you are part of an organization or you are part or you have a team so, so this is kind of, could be solution if you're working for a company outside or whatever they can buy those voucher and just give you this voucher you log in online and you just plug in the voucher you don't have to use any credit card so anytime you want you're ready you can if you have any someone who's outside who can uh, buy you something i mean I, I, so this is kind of work around for the case now 
but it was built for organization to track and manage. Like we have spent this much on certifications and vouchers and this much, and, and they get the results, right? So, so they will see, they will track, just for you to know, okay? Um, so remote online proctoring. So currently, AWS is offering this, the, the ability to do your exam online only through one partner. They have two global partners, PSI and VUE, but VUE activated the online proctoring. So I tried this the last month, maybe, or the month before in April. So I took my exam online. There is a process you have to install a tool and it will lock your laptop and then you have to take some picture of your surroundings and you have to stay on the camera and there is online proctor who will talk to you and will see you on the camera all the time okay so there will be physically a person monitoring you and there is like just for you to know how do this online proctoring work i mean they will see you talk to you and that's it then what will happen, these systems in the back end, they will track you, track your motion, your eyes, where, how do you look, so and they will send alerts. So they, will, if they have any suspicions that you are using a phone or you have some documents or you're moving your eyes in a way, they, have, they can cancel your exam or they can fail. They don't outsmart the system. So there is a physical person and there is an AI behind. And... What else? So you will need a reliable internet connection, a webcam, and tech, definitely a quiet and private place. The exams can be three hours long, depends on what type of exam you're taking. And this is the nice thing, you can, it's 24 seven. So if you feel comfortable to have your exam 3 a.m. in the morning. I know some people, they just feel comfortable to have their exams like late at night or like 3 a.m., 2 a.m. I don't know. I know like a lot of developers are like bats, you know? So they sleep during the day and stay up all the night. So this, this wasn't available with physical locations. You have to be, uh, to attend from Monday to Friday and you have to be, if it's from nine till five. So sometimes you have work, sometimes you're not available. So this gives you the flexibility to do the exam even on Saturdays. Only Sundays are not available. So Saturdays I think are available and they are all 24 seven. So if I'm certified and how do I recertify it? So your certification will be valid for three years, any certification, and you will get 50% voucher every time you pass an exam for the next exam. You can do another exam or you can recertify. So if you have an associate level and you've done it like three years ago and it's expiring, if you do a professional, you will have, you will recertify your associate. And for a specialty level, any special, the specialty can be only renewed with the specialty, but with the existing specialty, right? So like big data, if I was big data certified, and now they release the data analytics, so it replaced the big data. So I can recertify by getting the, big, uh, the same certificate. Clear? Let's move. So currently, in this, this is like September 2019. I think, I think, I don't have numbers now updated, but this number might have doubled by now. I mean, I'm not sure doubled, but with the corona and the people locked at home, a lot of people with the ability to do online testing, I think those numbers has increased. So as of September 2019, over 240,000 individuals hold active AWS certifications. Okay, this is active, so individuals. We're not counting certifications, like I'm counted only once, I'm not counted nine times, okay? So individuals, and the number it grew more than 70% between September 2018 to September 2019. What does that tell you? Okay, so there's a huge demand on AWS certification in the market. So 70% from September 18 to September 19, that's a huge. Yes, so uh, let's go more yeah. in 2020. Yeah, yeah it will Sorry? grow more. 
Yes, this that's what I said. With the COVID, with this year, you will see huge numbers. That's what I said. That those are September 2019. So with 2020, you will see. I mean, I'm I'm sure that the numbers will more than double. But it's the right time. I mean, if you don't jump in now, in 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 three four years, this will be again like uh, how do we call it? Commodity, right? So if you want to differentiate, you can differentiate now. You don't have to be late. You will have to be expert back then in, in two, three years. Now you're certified, but you will build more expertise, get more certified. So in two to three years, you will be differentiated as an expert. And the people who will be jumping in will be like the commodity of the market again. So this is the life cycle of technology. So learning path, again, for so there are like role-based learning, learning path. If you're more into business and uh, management and you don't do hands-on, cloud practitioner is your certificate. If you're an architect, like you would like to draw on this whiteboard and think about the technology stacks and how we can build highly available and scalable resilient network, architecture, what type of why I choose this versus that, what's the advantage of using this against that, so you will learn, so this is the architect path. If you are into coding and development, so you have the developer path, you learn to develop applications for the cloud. So let's be clear about the developer, because I know most of you are coders, so it will not teach you any coding language, so you bring what you have with you, and you learn how to develop for the cloud, whatever language you use. So you will know, you will learn how to utilize the APIs and the SDKs and how you integrate your code and best build your application using services, okay? So how you would build event-driven architectures, data-driven uh, uh, applications. So we're not teaching you Java or .NET or whatever. So you will bring your arsenals with you, but we will give you the tactics and strategies. That's the thing. Okay, if we are in, uh, since we are Lebanese, we're always in war context. Okay, so operation is learn to automate applications and networks and systems. So how I would monitor, how I would achieve better automation. I, I'm, I'm managing and making sure that I'm running in the optimal way and my systems are always up I can be proactive, how can I take action? So this is more of the operation side. So this is like basically uh, the, 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 as a role based. So we don't have any specialty here, right? So these are as a role. So for a cloud practitioner, you can jump into the library and search for certain courses. As I said, you will find the cloud practitioner essentials. To be honest, it's, it's not enough. Okay, so there are videos that will show you, but it's not enough to pass the exam. The exam is getting harder because they are elevating the foundation level so they can elevate the associate level and elevate the professional. I mean, AWS has new releases every minute. <laughs> okay, if you go check, you will see new features, new updates, a release, new service, announcement. So, so they have to they have to make sure their exams match what they offer. So that's why they are shifting some of the associate to the foundation. So the foundation is getting harder. And um, so you need some, maybe some more workshops or some more third party training. We will talk about the third party training by the end. It's not part of the presentation. So for an architect learning path, this is the highly recommended path for anyone who will jump into AWS, regardless if he's a developer or in operation, I always recommend going to practitioner architect, regardless, and then do whatever you want. So there is the technical essentials course is available in the digital library at AWS.training, and architecting on AWS is a class instructor led, and then there is the exam readiness, 
Uh, those are regularly offered by AWS online, half-day trainings. And then you can go jump into the associate exam. Okay. Um, after that, you can go for the advanced architecting class, and there is the solution architect professional readiness exam, and then you can go to the professional. But I always recommend experience, okay? Don't jump, just study and go. It's not possible. You will fail, trust me. The professional architect, if you don't have experience with AWS, do not ever attempt. It's not about your smart, your you've done your course, you you can if you want to take a you will pass the exam in professional if you don't have experience. It's real scenarios, they inspire the questions from customer experience, so they do not create hypothetical scenarios. Most of them are scenarios they collect from discussions with customers. So imagine how many customers communicate with AWS globally. So if you don't have the experience, this will be, I'm not saying it will be hard, it will be impossible, okay? So moving forward, if you are in the development side, so similar to the AWS and to the associate, the technical essential is a free digital material that you can have. And then you can move to developing on AWS. It's an instructor-led class, readiness, jump to the developer. So there is similar um, uh, for, for the DevOps exam. We call it the DevOps Pro, Pro. So there is advanced developing on AWS also class. So for operation, it's similar, but the exam is called SysOp Administrator. And those are like the specialties. So, so you can find all of these a learning path online available with, on AWS website. You just need to go to learning and certification or training and certification, and all of these are online. So, so it will show you what are the relative training that are available in the digital library and what's, uh, what's like a class that you can uh, attend. Um, so from pricing, we discussed this, that the AWS certification, like the practitioner is for $100, associate exam is for $150, the professional and specialty for $300. A trick to know that each exam you take, you get 50% voucher. Regardless, if you paid 50% for the exam, you will get 50% for the next. So you get it? So I pay 100 for the practitioner, I get 50% voucher for the associate. So the associate will be $75. And then I pass the associate, I'll get 50% on the next exam. So, so if I'm going for professional, I pay 150, regardless that I paid half. So it's always you get 50% voucher the moment you pass, but only one time. So if you fail, you won't get the voucher again, just to make sure you know. So. Those are the public classes offered by AWS official prices. Okay, they are expensive for, they are cheap relative to what uh, we, we've known before about IT training instructor led, especially with lab access. Okay guys, so let's move. So uh, I just had some slides about machine learning. I know a lot of you might be interested. So there is a path to, to for the machine learning, it's the uh, the course they are offering like really very good. I mean, they are focusing on training on uh, for ML and AI. They are the same uh, uh, developers who, uh, in Amazon who use those courses to train themselves and write what they write and develop what they develop. So this is they are sharing their internal training with the people now with public. Okay, so jump in i mean the 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 material is really amazing modern the instructor that gives the machine learning training is an expert in what he do he, i mean an expert in training so you will enjoy if you are into ml jump in and find this digital training online they are free on aws.training okay a lot of machine learning training and data science there is a data science course 
amazing course. I think it's like six hours of videos with instructor. I mean, and some, uh, there are no hands on, but you can, that's the difference. When you go to the digital library, they are only videos, but it, there are really good material. I mean, worth if you are into this. So this is a um, summary about NLP, deep learning classes and stuff like that. So, so it's not only about getting certified, it's about teaching you machine learning. So, so there are like 70 plus free digital courses with 50 plus hours of content for all levels from foundation to intermediate and even to advanced. There's a channel on YouTube for an AWS SageMaker expert. Also, she has like, I think 20 videos. They are so amazing. She, she do hands on uh, on SageMaker and you can watch them if you are really interested. It's kind of, for machine learning, you need to prepare a lot. This is my current uh, 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 challenge, like getting my 10th certificate, machine learning or data specialty, database specialty. So I don't know, let's see. Next meetup, I'll show you. <laughs> so uh, these are the path. You need to learn about data science and different I mean, you need to have development skills and yeah. So this is more or less uh, was a backup slide. So, okay. So there are some digital training partners if you are interested in something special like EDX, Coursera, Udacity and Udemy. So these are the official like digital training partners. Okay, they offer some customized training like in their own way. They don't deliver AWS training, but they are certified by AWS, like EDX and Coursera to deliver some courses. So like uh, on uh, EDX, you will find AWS Developer Professional Series. It's a three course series, so it's not the standard. So if you are interested in Amazon and machine learning, you will find the Amazon SageMaker uh, simplifying machine learning application development. Okay, so there are some special courses that you can jump in if you're interested in certain field, like if you're interested in microservices, you can, uh, or, or serverless, there is a course on Coursera called Building Serverless Applications. You see, so they are not standard trainings, they are more customized to serve some uh, uh, focus. Okay, and uh, let me just finish with, since we're talking about digital training, there are third party uh, training material online that you can purchase monthly, like A Cloud Guru and Linux Academy. I think A Cloud Guru has acquired Linux Academy recently. So they offer you very good material to tackle the exam, okay? So let's put it in this context. They focus on helping you pass the exam. Okay, and they are totally different. The approach is not walking you through how you will deal in real scenarios and life more than walking you how to pass your exam. So yes, those will help you on top of your training. So I will recommend going over at least one of these online third party uh, tools. I'm not doing any promotion for anyone, but they are well known. So everyone knows them, but they are targeted towards the exams more than the real experience. So, and they will recommend also having some experience. Uh, I think I came to the end of my presentation, one hour and three minutes, Anas. Nothing can have Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you guys. I mean, uh, let me know if there are more questions. Um, so anybody with questions, please go ahead. <laughs>